As long as man has walked the earth, we have looked up to the stars and wondered what mysteries the heavens hold. In 300 BC, Aristotle looked out and was fascinated by the stars and everything around him. In 1508, Copernicus developed the theory that the earth was the center of the universe. In the 1500s, scientist Galileo, nicknamed the father of modern science, was extremely interested in space around him and even created a small telescope in 1609 with a pair of glasses. He discovered that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe, and this began to shape the way we view space and the stars above us. Now telescopes like Hubble are able to see farther than Galileo or Aristotle could ever possibly imagine. Then, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. On May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy gave a speech at Rice University. He began what we now know as the space race. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. After successfully landing on the moon and creating the space shuttle, which revolutionized space exploration, we needed to focus on the next milestone. That's where the International Space Station comes in. 23 years later, in 1964, President Ronald Reagan addressed the nation in his State of the Union speech. We can reach for greatness again. We can follow our dreams to distant stars, living and working in space for peaceful economic and scientific gain. Tonight, I am directing NASA to develop a permanently manned space station and to do it within a decade. This space station will help us conduct experiments with other nations and bring us together as many nations explore. We have a right to explore space and the International Space Station helps us understand science through research. Because space isn't governed or regulated, we don't have borders or boundaries like we do on Earth. We have a responsibility to pioneer because we've invited other countries to participate in the space station so we can strengthen peace and build prosperity together. Our responsibility goes even deeper to the roots of our ancestors who explored before us. Commander Chris Hatfield, member of the Canadian Space Agency in Mission 34 and 35 aboard the ISS. There's always you know, conflicting thoughts. How should we be leaving Earth? Should we be leaving Earth? Should we go to the moon? Should we go to an asteroid? Should we go to Mars? You just look back in history. If you want to sail across the Atlantic, you don't uh, start designing a boat and then uh, point and start sailing. You sail within sight of land for a long time and you figure out how to beat scurvy and how to sail across the wind and how to keep track and navigate and, and learn about all the things you need to know. And then you start sailing further and further. Uh, and eventually, you can sail with confidence much further uh, into the unknown. The space station is that vehicle, that enormous test bed that is still sailing within sight of land uh, teaching us how to, uh, to leave the planet. We have a responsibility to honor those astronauts who gave their lives to further research and explore space. A responsibility to honor Orville and Wilbur Wright as they took their first flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. If we don't continue to explore, if we stop pushing, if we stop testing the limits of human endurance, we do them a disservice and shortchange future generations from the benefits of science and exploration. We have a responsibility to pioneer because we've partnered with 15 other countries such as Japan, Russia, Canada, and the United Kingdom, and many more to participate in the space program. The Russians provide transportation of food, astronauts, and equipment on their spacecraft called the Soyuz. This space station will help us throughout future years of exploring space, researching and developing new equipment and technology. The United States has given over $125 billion to help fund and build a space station through NASA, and other countries like Russia and China have contributed as well. The estimated cost of the space station is over $160 billion and their plan to spend $3 billion U.S. dollars each year until 2024. On January 9, 2014, 
President Obama announced the approval of extending the functionality of the International Space Station through NASA until at least 2024. The top priority for the Obama administration is to launch United States astronauts in U.S. soil and the extension of the International Space Station's lifespan will help that organization achieve this priority. Your example, I think, means so much, not to, just to uh, your fellow Americans, but also to your fellow citizens on Earth. And, and the space program has always embodied uh, our sense of adventure and ex exploration and, and courage uh, as you guys work in a really harsh environment. This will give the crew four more years than originally estimated. And most recently, we began work on an exciting and technologically groundbreaking mission to send U.S. astronauts to an asteroid as a stepping stone towards sending astronauts to Mars in the 2030s. Even though the cost of the space station is hard to wrap our minds around, there are benefits from the space exploration that we don't even realize. The research done aboard the ISS has given us many of the household items that we use today. We just don't think of where they come from. The research done in a zero-G environment, we've developed memory foam that is used in spacecraft in the ISS. It is the same memory foam that is in our mattresses and pillows. The same padding that is in the astronauts' helmets and EVA suits is in football helmets in the NFL, college football, and peewee leagues all across the globe. Almost every day, we use Velcro to close our backpacks or bike helmets. Astronauts use Velcro to attach notepads, flashlights, water containers, and computers to the side walls of ISS so they don't float away. When Michael Phelps won Olympic gold in Beijing, he was wearing a Speedo LZR racer suit that was developed by NASA researchers. Over 90% of all baby formulas and baby foods contain algae that helps brain function, and this was all discovered in food research done in space. Even your parents' cordless vacuum was invented by NASA for use on board the ISS and other spacecraft. One third of all cell phone cameras use technology used and developed by NASA. The ISS has been supported by every president since Ronald Reagan. And even though funding is constantly debated, it is clear that space exploration is a priority for the many countries involved. On October 15, 2008, President Bush signed the NASA Authorization Act to continue to fund missions and build an alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is mounted on the ISS to study dark matter and search out the origins of the universe. Even as recently as Christmas Eve, all eyes look through social media to watch astronauts go on several spacewalks to repair broken coolant lines on the ISS. All spacewalks have been put on hold since June when an Italian astronaut nearly drowned in his suit as it filled up with fluids on a spacewalk. Astronaut Rick Mastraccio tweeted, hanging out on Christmas Eve doing some home improvements and posted this picture. There have been 38 manned expeditions to the ISS and this looks to continue into the future. As it orbits above us and nearly 400 miles away, and the permanent crew of six people continue to research and study in space. The ISS won't be remembered unless we continue to explore. It's not a piece of paper like the NASA Authorization Act that will make a difference. It's the people behind it. The ones who dare to dream and continue to push past our limits, they're the ones who make a difference. Just as Christopher Columbus set sail to discover a new world, we must continue to step back and look at our new world from above and push out to new worlds beyond our reach. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. Darkest night, the